The Mojave Desert, unique, beautiful, one of nature's wonders. Home to some of the most unique geological formations on the planet, the Trona Pinnacles. Frequented by overlanders and off-road enthusiasts, these limestone spires will evoke a sense of otherworldliness. Sequoia National Forest, only minutes away, a traveler may start on the desert floor in the morning, but find themselves sleeping under the forest canopy as night falls. As various pines and sequoia trees tower overhead, swaying in the wind, excellent overlanding, hiking, and off-road opportunities abound. Join us as we travel from Jawbone Canyon to the Paiute Mountains then down through the Kelso Valley, arriving at the Trona Pinnacles. This is Trail Newbie. All right, guys, uh, we are headed through the Mojave Desert here, um, up the uh, 14, yeah, which ultimately ends up connecting with the 395. Uh, but today we're going to stop off, uh, start our uh, journey in Jawbone uh, Canyon. It's kind of an overlanding and uh, off-road vehicle paradise here. So um, really we're uh, going to get underway and uh, we'll be on the pavement for just a little bit as we uh, enter Jawbone Canyon. Uh, but I think before we know it, uh, we're going to end up uh, on the dirt roads. So uh, stick with us. I hope you enjoy the journey. Jawbone Canyon is an off-roader's paradise. Dirt roads and trails carve distinct stripes into the surrounding landscape. Managed by the Bureau of Land Management and supported by the Friends of Jawbone organization, it's easy to see why this gem of the desert is so popular. Some washboard here and there, but overall the road is easy at least for now. All right, so uh, we are just about a couple miles in uh, going up Jawbone Canyon Road. Um, very nice drive thus far. Um, as I mentioned before, just about any uh, four-wheel drive vehicle could do this, maybe even some uh, two-wheel drives with high clearance, and you'll see why uh, a little later on as we run into um, just a little bit of more difficult terrain as we start heading up the mountain. Uh, so uh, very scenic and uh, enjoyable. Uh, we're making our way uh, over this first set of hills uh, where we're going to drop down here to the Kelso Valley, where uh, it was pretty windy, uh, not going to lie, uh, so you got to be ready for that, and it's obvious there why they have the uh, uh, wind farms uh, off on the hills, uh, but it's not uh, long after that we start heading up the hill, uh, the trees start to change into uh, oak trees um, from the desert landscape. And then um, once you start to get beyond those uh, oak trees, obviously, we start getting into the pines as we uh, get closer to Sequoia National Forest. As we gained in elevation, the trees began to change, and it became obvious we were not in the desert any longer. This valley is home to the Cottonwood Creek, as it meanders down the mountain to the valley floor. Switchback after switchback carves away the hillside, passing by natural springs and mines along the way.
we didn't encounter a single other vehicle. A telltale sign that you've got to be committed to this more lengthy journey of around 31 miles. Ultimately, we'll arrive at an elevation of around 7,200 feet in the Sequoia National Forest. Well, here's a really uh, cool stop as the uh, Pacific Crest Trail actually crosses over Jawbone Canyon Road several times. Uh, the trail also kind of parallels uh, alongside the trail. And uh, you can see we've uh, hit the snow. Uh, it's uh, pretty sparse for now. Don't think we'll have any issues there, but you definitely want to get your weather uh, correct on this trail because you could uh, think you're going to make it all the way and then encounter uh, conditions that just your vehicle's not ready for um, and have an issue making it all the way up to uh, Paiute. Off to our left, there's a uh, interesting structure. It's a chip burner from uh, an old sawmill. Uh, we're going to go inside. And um, here there's a lot of holes, kind of a, a spectacle of light, assuming these are uh, bullet holes. All right, we are uh, now in uh, Claraville, uh, at the top of the trail here. And uh, we're just going a little bit further to look for a campground uh, marked on Gaia that uh, is called Landers. As we look for a campground, uh, there's some nice little trails uh, around the Landers campground that uh, did increase the uh, difficulty level just a bit, but uh, nothing too bad. What causes some of us to thirst for adventure? To forego the typical comforts of home, to get out into the solitude of nature. It's a lot of work, a lot of packing, gear and time and preparation. Is it simply the fresh air, the beauty of nature, or is there something more? Perhaps this can be answered in many ways. I know for me, it's to do something different and expect a different outcome. If we keep doing the same thing, and think somehow the world around us will change its ways to accommodate our needs, we'd be fools. 2020 pushed me into a new realm, a new mindset, one that will forever be a part of me. Tonight we're gonna make a very easy shrimp foil bake with some sausage, zucchini, shrimp, corn, potatoes, and uh, some fresh parsley. Get it all here in uh, some tin foil and onto the fire. And uh, let's see how this turns out. Uh, I can't even tell you how good this smells uh, and tastes. Look at all those colors. Uh, this is a great easy meal. Fire is uh, perfect tonight. It's uh, time to turn it in and uh, see what uh, tomorrow brings. We woke up this morning and uh, looks like we got a, a light dusting of snow. It's a little more like kind of freezing rain, not your traditional snowflakes that fell. Uh, so pretty cold here this morning. A little bit of a weather front coming in. So uh, we are actually packing up. And uh, we're going to skip uh, breakfast this morning, just settle for some coffee, head down the trail. What I didn't tell you uh, yesterday is that uh, Jawbone Canyon Road dead ends into uh, Paiute Mountain Road, uh, where you take a right and head over towards the Landers Campground. Uh, we're going to continue on Paiute Mountain Road and uh, take us down the backside of the mountain.
As we get lower in elevation, uh, the desert terrain comes back, as do the uh, Joshua trees, which uh, only grow at a certain elevation in just this uh, part of the world here. Paiute Mountain Road uh, dead ends at uh, Kelso Valley Road at a uh, historical area uh, mining town that was called uh, Sage Land. We are back on the pavement, headed uh, north to the 178, which is actually a road that you can take from uh, the backside of the Sierras uh, through Lake Isabella area, and ultimately you end up in uh, Bakersfield. It's, uh, it's a nice drive in and of itself, but it's a, it's a highway, um, so not, uh, not the road less traveled as it were. We are about to hit the 14 north uh, just for a little bit, and we're going to cut over through Ridgecrest and make a little stop, but ultimately arrive at the Trona Pinnacles. The road here is uh, kind of washboard. It's about five miles before uh, you look off in the distance and see these uh, odd shapes, which are the Trona Pinnacles, uh, that stick out from the uh, desert landscape. BLM land here uh, with uh, really good dispersed camping. As we get closer, uh, you realize how tall uh, some of these pinnacles are. Just a really unique landscape. They filmed a lot of uh, movies out here. There are a lot of uh, trails out here, popular for motorcycles, uh, off-highway vehicles, but also just your uh, typical 4x4s kind of wandering around, uh, checking out the various campsites. I uh, can't recommend enough at least getting out here once and uh, checking it out. I do not think you'll uh, be disappointed. Okay, uh, because we didn't get to make breakfast this morning, we're having breakfast for lunch, some eggs with uh, a whole lot of add-ins, uh, diced ham, bell peppers, uh, tomato, onion, mushrooms this is uh this is gonna be really good put it all together there you have it breakfast for lunch
What a great uh, afternoon, and uh, now just uh, hanging out here at the campfire. Uh, Going to get some shut-eye, and uh, looking forward to a great night's sleep, and uh, we'll see you guys in the morning. Morning here is uh, just perfect. No wind. Uh, temperature is perfect. Uh, just look at this place. Coffee, uh, courtesy of the uh, Keurig, hooked up to the generator. And uh, since we uh, had such a big lunch yesterday, we skipped dinner. So uh, this morning, we're actually going to make dinner uh, from the night before for breakfast. So uh, throw in some mushrooms, get those all sauteed up, and uh, cut some asparagus here. Throw um, all of that into a pan over uh, some hot coals. Oh, this looks great. Uh, just doing some uh, steak seasoning on a couple of uh, New Yorks. And I'm uh, going to put those right over the old campfire uh, coals here. And having uh, dinner for breakfast. Once again, uh, you can't always have things uh, planned out perfectly. So sometimes you need to uh, improvise. There you have it, guys. Yesterday we had uh, breakfast for lunch. Here is uh, dinner for breakfast. What does it profit a man to explore God's handiwork? What purpose is there behind packing up and heading out the door? Why does it feel so rejuvenating to break the cycle and find yourself seemingly so awe-inspired by something so simple as a starry night? Shouldn't this be commonplace? Shouldn't the monotony of the daily grind somehow become the exception to what your life has in store for you? While we've all fallen victim to the patterns of our lives, that doesn't mean we're stuck in this cycle. Breaking the mold is easy. It just requires taking the first step. A year ago, I never would have dreamt that I'd be so enthralled by the prospect of exploring the deserts and mountains of California. Now, I can't stop dreaming of what's to come. <laughs>